Welcome back, beautiful. I am Natasha B, your host here at Beauty Junkie Monkey, and today I am going to be sharing with you all my knowledge and research about sun care sunscreen. And if you are like me and you're like, uh, I think I'm doing it right, you need to <laughs> listen to this because I'm going to simplify this for you. We're going to break down what is a sunscreen, what is a sunblock, uh, what's good for fair skin like myself, what's good for people that um, tend to be more um, prone to melasma and so forth. I'm going to make it really simple and I've done all the research for you. You do not need to do any more. I basically went down a rabbit hole of sun care for the last two weeks and it boggled my mind. I mean, oh my gosh, you can get into these places where they're like, no, these chemicals are going to kill you and you're going to be toxic. And, and, and the wording that they use is like, it's toxic. It's going to get you. It's like that. I hate that. That's fear mongering. And it's really to benefit their purpose for you to buy their product. Oh, ours is clean. Ours is better. Be wary of that, people. It's it's dangerous. It is marketing. And you have to kind of think of the back of your head. Don't let that stop you from doing your own research uh, into the actual product itself. And again, when it comes to things like chemicals and so forth. I know it can be really, really challenging and there's a lot of questions out there, but um, I'm hoping to provide you with as much information today so that you can go and make an informed decision when you purchase your sunscreen. Now, let's talk about sunscreen. If you are like me and you are an anti-aging kind of a person, like you want to maximize your skin. I'm 46 years old, for those of you who don't know. Um, and to me, skincare is like next to godliness. To me, it took me a long time to get here. I had some bumps and bruises along the way. Uh, some skincare information that I had was old and outdated. So of course my constant research really helps to up my knowledge in my game so I can share it out with you. Now, unfortunately, um, most of you guys know this, but th those of you who don't know, I actually got basal cell skin cancer uh, earlier this spring, right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. That was a huge eye opener. And the crazy thing about this, is I did use SPF. I did use some sort of sun protecting factor. That's what SPF stands for. But my problem was I was rather naive about it. I kind of, I was just being lazy. Like <laughs> I was being lazy and it literally bit me in the nose. Like right, talk about like cutting my nose despite my face. So, so stupid of me. So I want to share my information with you guys so you don't make the same silly mistake that I did and hopefully help prevent any type of skin cancer. Now, as I'm going to say as a preface, there's really nothing out there. The UVA, UVBs, they're very, very strong. And if you're prone to it or if you've done some major damage in your youth, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will get skin cancer, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't. See, UVA and UVB rays, they penetrate deep into the dermis. So not your epidermis, not the top layer, but deep down in the dermis. And that's where it causes a lot of damage. So the UVA, UVB, what they usually do is the ultraviolet uh, A, so aging is what breaks down your collagen that attacks you. It causes um, what's called free radical release where you have the, uh, the little cells that go around and kind of destroy each other and really cause aging skin. Think of it this way. Something about Mary. We all know that movie, right? And the lady's sitting there and she's got that one of those sun visors on and she literally <laughs> looks like leather. That is what sun will do to you. That is cooking your skin, it's aging your skin, and it's breaking down your structural supports like your collagen, um, uh, like your um, supporting factors here. I'm trying to think of everything so fast. I'll get to it. But it's breaking everything down and that's causing deep wrinkles, fine lines, and really thick leathery skin. And again, as we all know, the big C word, we want to avoid that as well. So if you are like me and you want to age beautifully and gracefully with some little adjustments here and there, you know, some of us, uh, depending on our skin, depending on our age, depending on genetics really uh, some of us need a little tweak some of us need a little bit more and that is okay there is no shame here okay this is a shame free zone shame free uh, page I I'm not here about bashing anybody for whatever they choose to do my goal here is to help you achieve the best bang for your buck give you the best knowledge so you can make an informed decision and that is important to everybody here including myself because the more research I do the better I get. <laughs> a lot of things changes in a very short period of time. So if you are not using some sort of sunscreen all the time, 
So every season, you are literally cutting your nose to spite your face because those rays do damage. And like I said, they do alter your DNA. And that's why it's so important to use it both summer, spring, and fall. Now, like I said, myself, I was rather stupid. I always use an SPF 15. Maybe that's okay with somebody who has actual pigmented skin, but as you guys can see, without makeup, I am pretty much see-through. <laughs> so I lack pigment in a lot of ways. I think I'm a chromosome away from actual being an albino. Uh, my skin is so fair, my eyes are blue. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You can see my veins. It, it, it's it's just the way I was. So using an SPF 15 was absolutely insufficient and I'd only use it once and I'd never re really reapply unless I was on someplace tropical and then I'd always give myself a big burn. Like you guys know what that, you know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. So the whole point is to avoid doing that. And I wanna explain what is the importance between a sunscreen and a sunblock. So let's get into it. Okay, sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen is your typical chemical, okay? It's uh, absorbed within the skin, so the first kind of layer of the skin, the epidermis, and what it does is it helps to uh, bounce out, like so it takes the rays in and it does like this like Power Ranger kind of, uh, it kind of heats itself up and then just, just kind of pushes it out and gets it out. When it does that, it does cause a little bit of heat within the skin. So for people that suffer from melasma, you might want to avoid a sunscreen, like a chemical sunscreen. Because what, like I said, it causes a little bit of heat. It's like I said, that Power Ranger, it goes psh, 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 and it gets rid of it before it gets down into the dermis and protects the skin. So that is what a sunscreen will do. That's your chemical sunscreen. Um, it's easy to absorb, it's easy to use. There's usually no white residue, but you do have to wait that 15, 20 minutes. Yes, you actually do. So if you put it on right before you go out, you're kinda, again, you're setting yourself up for a little bit of failure because it's not active yet. It's not ready to rock and roll yet, okay? But again, it's, it is better than nothing at all. Uh, the problem with also a chemical sunscreen is that it breaks down faster in the sun. The UVA and the UVBs really attack it. And because of that, that reaction that they do, they kind of have to work overtime to try to prevent it from breaking it down. So again, a sunscreen does break down a little bit faster than your typical sunblock. Uh, the other issue is that there has been some talk as of late that certain chemicals are being uh, metabolized within your body and that there is some concern that there may be more than what should be tolerated or what is considered okay. Here's the thing guys, I have looked, I have done research, I followed people that are very smart, doctors, dermatologists, people with degrees, people, you know, and a lot of them have some mixed reviews in it. The bottom line is if you do not feel comfortable using a sunscreen, that is okay. But you can use a sunblock and this is where it's going to be a little bit different. So a sunblock is basically like a physical shield. It is titanium or zinc and it literally, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's that white goopy stuff that you put on your face and it's really white. That is what's called the white cast. Uh, a lot of people hate that because in photos you can see some of that flash or you can see that white casting and it makes them look really, really pale. For somebody like me, it doesn't really do much. I mean, I'm already pale. But what I um, what is good about this is that it sits on top of the skin, it doesn't get absorbed at all, and it is literally like a shield and it's like, thou shalt not pass, you know, like nothing gets through. It holds a little bit longer, which is better than the sunscreen. The sunscreen, so the chemical sunscreen, breaks down a little bit faster compared to something with titanium or zinc, okay? Uh, you have to reapply every two hours. Now here's the caveat. Let's say you work inside of a building and you don't get a lot of sun exposure and you're not working out, you're not wiping your face or anything like that. The sink and the titanium uh, will stay on top of the skin and you don't necessarily have to reapply every two hours. And again, if you're inside, if you're outside, yeah, you're gonna definitely want to because as soon as you add sweat or you add any type of movement or anything like that, it's gonna start breaking down. Um, the other thing is that the sunblock usually has less of an actual reaction as a sunscreen, the chemicals. 
but the issue with the sunblock is you need a lot. It's no different than using a sunscreen. You can't just sit there and do the little tap, 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 and barely put any on. You literally have to put two fingers lengths worth of sunblock for it to be effective. And there's sunblocks out there that actually go around the eyes, which I think is fantastic. Although wearing a nice uh, sunglasses is also preferred for protection, but you need to literally get it all over the place. And especially around the ears, when I had my, um, my skin cancer, they did uh, a whole full body once over. And that's now my new regime. I have to go, I think every year and get this done. And she was looking at my ear and I was thinking to myself, when was the last time I put sunscreen on my ear? I'm like, I never put sunscreen on my ear because using a sun block is goopy and gross and it's not effective. So a lot of people ask me, well, how, how do you do this? How do you manage? Okay, so I have a couple of my favorites. These are new ones that I'm playing with and that I'm enjoying a great deal. I'm gonna share them with you, but I wanna give this caveat. You have to go and try it out based on your skin type and your skin needs, okay? Like I said, if you suffer from melasma or a really bad hyperpigmentation, you wanna stay away from the sunscreens and you're gonna to have to look over for the sunblock, so the zinc or the titanium. If you can do both, it's even better. But here's the thing, it's gonna be a little of trial and error because there's the other factor which is what's the carrier of these um, titanium zinc, usually it's oil and people with oily skin don't do so well with it. So you understand where there's gonna be that give and take. I actually use both. So I've stopped using primer for my foundation. As you guys can see today, I have my full, full face makeup on. And what I like to you is the, as the is N tree, hyaluronic acid watery sun gel. This is what I use as my primer now. So I do my whole skincare regime. And then after my daytime moisturizer, I throw this on top. Now my daytime moisturizer that testing right now. I have a new line that I'm testing. Um, I, it doesn't have an SPF in it. If yours has an SPF in it, who cares? Add some more. You'll never go wrong. That's just my two cents on the matter. More isn't always bad, but just again, make sure you're using one that's appropriate for your skin type. Uh, I like this because it has hyaluronic acid, and to me, that's a huge factor when it comes to my dry, dehydrated skin. So I need something to keep me plump and make me firm, and this is one that I love to use. But I also use, when I'm feeling different, um, the Vivier Sheer Broad Spectrum SPF 45, and it's got transparent zinc oxide. This one is a little bit greasier. I love this in the winter because again, the moisture factor is nice and high with this. It does have a little bit of oil into it, which I love for my skin type. If you're dry like me, uh, excellent. This you can purchase online or you have to go and purchase through, um, there's a lot of dermatologists that sell this as well. So that's where you can get that. My other favorite, if you guys hadn't seen the video that I did below, was Shishido. I hope I said that right. I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm so sorry. But this is an actual stick that you can put over and under. Yes, over your makeup or under your makeup. And what I love about this is it is easy to reapply. There's no breakdown, so I'll show you guys right here. There's no breakdown of your makeup. There's very, very little transfer. And then boom, I can put this on throughout the day. It's easy to set within your purse. Uh, you can just bring a little press powder with yourself and just kind of tap it if you want a little bit more of a mat. But I love this and the protection is fantastic. Now again, this is more of a chemical, but uh, it's a, a safer chemical. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and then of course, my other favorite that I use, now these ones I use for my face, okay? I'm gonna spend the money to, for my face, but for my body, I'm not gonna spend $50, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we all know we're not gonna do that for our body, if we're just gonna drink it up. So one of my favorite is from Neutrogena. Now they have different brands. They also carry um, the sunblock version as well, so the mineral version as well. Uh, commercially, it's, it's inexpensive. Uh, personally, I love this too because what I can do usually when I'm out gardening is I'll put on my SPF, I'll put on, um, usually not, 
not full makeup, but I like some sort of BB cream or something like that. And then mid afternoon, I kind of keep this close to where my water bottle is because it's my, my mental reminder. And I kind of look at the clock. I'm like, yeah, it's been a couple hours. And then I just go ahead and spritz all over my face. And guess what guys, it gets the ear. So boom, done. It also gets that awkward spots in the back that you can't get. And please, please, please take care of your chest. Or it's like, we like to call it your decote because if you do not, you're going to have that aging sunspot saggy skin going on because your skin's being cooked by the sun so uh i <laughs> guys i use all of them i figured i've got some sunblock i got some sunscreen at the end of the day there was nothing within the research that i looked on the sunscreen versus the sunblock that actually said it's dangerous there isn't and i think the thing is now that people are made more aware of it they're gonna be more likely to question it. There's gonna be more research put forward based on these concerns uh, from the public. And I think personally, I think it's a win-win for everybody. So it doesn't matter what SPF, this is what I've, I've, I've learned from the dermatologists um, right up to, to the professionals. It doesn't matter which sunscreen or sunblock that you use, use it based on your skin, on your needs, and on the fa fact that you're gonna use it. If you are like, ah, I'm not crazy about chemicals on my in my body, I get that. But at the same time, I highly doubt that this is going to cause major issues compared to what I've eaten at Burger King. I think there's more preservatives and issues that I'm ingesting there. <laughs> not that I eat at Burger King, I'm just saying. When you eat out, there's a lot of stuff that's in our food that's processed and that we don't even think twice about. But when it comes to our skin, this is where this is where things change, right? Like I hope you understand what I'm trying to say is that any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. And there is no proof, there is no definite proof that it is going to be uh, toxic to your body. There still needs a lot more research within it. Uh, so I hope this helps kind of clarify things for you. So let's do a quick recap. Sunscreen is a chemical, not great for people with melasma uh, because it has a bit of a heat exchange, but it's easy to use. You must wait 20 minutes. It does break down faster, so you have to reapply. Um, and always, again, stay up in the 30s and 40s. Don't do anything less than that. You're, it's, it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Sunblock, again, is that physical shield, that titanium or zinc oxide. It has a white cast. It holds a little bit longer. It's a little messy to reapply. However, you get a really good shield. There's no penetration whatsoever. It's less reactive skin-wise, um, and you just need to remember to keep applying it. So tell me your thoughts. I would love to hear what you think about this. I hope I simplified things for you. If you have any questions or comments or anything whatsoever, please add them down below. If you like my content, I would so appreciate a like, a share, a comment. Anytime you do that, it helps the algorithm of my page so more people see me. So I do appreciate you guys so much for your support when doing that. Don't think I don't notice. I do and I'm Again, I'm so appreciative. And yeah, tell me your thoughts. All I care about you guys is be safe, use your sunscreen, reapply, and if you forget, reapply again. I cannot wait to see you guys on my next review, and I'd love to hear some suggestions down below. All right, I love you all, be safe, and I will see you on the next review.